Hey everybody, Dubby here with another Stratego Game Analysis. This is going to be game number 8 of our Road Gold series with the flag up front. But before I do that, I want to talk about the leaderboards. You have the bronze, silver, gold, and platinum leaderboards. There are specific links you can click to that allows you to search the leaderboards and maybe find out how a certain player has advanced if you played them like three months ago or a year ago and you want to see where they stand you can search to see on those leaderboards where that player is and let's get started to find these links you go to the stratego forum and it's under the moderator team forum uh, on, on the rules section here so i click on that and you get to the rules section and then you want to click on here where it says rating system ranking structure leaderboards we want the leaderboards so you click on that and it's the seventh post and that will give you all four of the uh, leaderboard uh, links now they're very slow sometimes they don't work but sometimes you have to you might have to refresh them a couple times it takes them like 10 to 15 seconds to load so I load them up all up uh, real quick here and we get to the first one we'll talk about is the bronze leaderboard now you have uh, the position the name the rank the wins losses ties rating and ratio now uh, you have 15 screen names per page and then you just click down here to move to the next page but like I said, it takes it takes like 10 seconds every time you click a link on these pages. It's real slow. So now the first, uh, uh, I think, 20 records here in the bronze database is, is corrupt data. You can see here we have a rating of 777 and 574. You're supposed to have a 299 rating. So then I click on the uh, second page. You just come down here to navigate. And... That will take you to the second page. I think I'm talking, let me just fast forward here. So you click on it and you'll get this screen with the circles. It takes forever, it seems, but it might be 10 seconds. And so now we're on page two. You can see it highlights page two and now we're starting on record 16. And now we're starting with here, the bronze marshal players. So what I want to talk about is the number of bronze players. If you look down here on the lower right hand side, you have, there are 500, almost 550,000 bronze players. That's a lot of players. And, and, and that's why I started my YouTube channel because we have so many bronze players and so few silver gold and platinum players because this game stratego even though it has simple rules it is really a complex game and to play well you need to learn all the stratego patterns and how to attack and how to play defense and how to read boards it's it's very complex you have to know how to plan and that just takes a lot of time so hopefully my videos will speed up the time for beginners so they can move up the leaderboard uh, now, out of these 550,000, there might be maybe 100,000 aliases. And then you might have another maybe 150,000, 200,000 players who've just signed up, you know, to play a game or two, maybe maybe less than five games, and then they decided to quit. But that still leaves maybe 200, 250,000 players who tried to move up the leaderboard, but for whatever reason, just can't get out of the uh, the the bronze level. They just they just can't move up. Now, some of them might have moved up. Some of them might have made it to the silver or to the gold status, but then they lost some games and wound up back to probably where their where their uh, uh, rating level should be back in bronze. So if you're a player watching my videos and you're struggling in the bronze level, you can join the club. Eh, there's lots and lots and lots of struggling bronze players uh, trying, to, trying to move up the leaderboard, and it is, it is difficult. It is, even, even the best players, they all struggle when they first play this game to move up the leaderboard. So that's the bronze level. Now you can search for players uh, 
and in the name category you come over here to this it looks like a cup but i think it's supposed to be a key and then you can search for specific names or you can like uh, you can have a uh a subset of the name and get a whole bunch of listings of names that have a, a subset of whatever you're searching for. So I searched here for uh, one of my old aliases. Uh, I had one called Rum and Coke. So let's see here. Let's see, did I do the search? We'll do that in a second. Here we go. You come up here, you hit click on this for the name category. It's on the other side. And then it'll say equal to, it'll give you some options. If you say equal to, that means it, it, it has to be exact. But I clicked uh, contains. You just click over here. You get some options to filter what you're searching. So I want to say contains, and I'm just going to put in the word Coke. If I could type. And then we search for that. Then you just click filter. And it will filter these you know, half a million records to find all the names of players that have Coke in their name. And it, that was pretty quick. So there you can see I'm, I'm number 2204 on the ranking. Rum and Coke, Bronze Marshall, 15 and 0, 281 rating. So that's how you search for names. And I think I'd do another search here. I'd search for, for, uh, Drunken player, we'll see if we can find Drunken player in the, if you ever watch Drunken player play, he has a, a uh, his name I guess is now Trumpster Bob, and his, his Stratego name is Drunken player, so I search for him here, and let's see, so it's, it remembers your old thing, so you have to clear it when you want to go back to the full list, so now I just search for drunk, and we're going to get all the names of players that have uh, drunk in their name. And there we go. And there, there is drunken player. He's two, three, two, one. And there's his record. So that's how you search for names. All right, and then you can click on these columns uh, and double click. It's like an Excel spreadsheet. You can click on them to get, see who has the most wins or most losses. So I clicked on here. And now you would think this is the player with the most wins or losses, but you have to also look down here where you are in the in the menu screen. I'm on page five. So you have to click on page one to see the top uh, player with the most wins at the bronze level. So I click on page one. And now you see A, B, C, D has the most wins. And he's played a lot of games. And then you see like here, Scott, Scott Russia, his family, they played almost, geez, 31,000, 32,000 games. That's a lot of games. Jimmy Crackcorn, he's played almost 18,000 games. I wonder if he still, I wonder if he still lotto blitzes on the right side. <laughs> I think he, he should change his tactics and maybe he'll get out of, he'll get out of um, the bronze level. What is he? Oh, he's a bronze miner. So he, he still hasn't learned. Uh, but that's, these are the names you can see, and you'll probably play a lot of these players who've played lots and lots of games that are still playing. So that's the bronze level, right? 550,000 players. And we might have, you might have had 250,000, 300,000 act, active players that try to advance. And, and right now you might have only maybe 40, 50,000 bronze players who play, you know, once a week or once every other week. Uh, but then, you know, probably a lot of other players just, just gave up. They just couldn't get out of the bronze level. All right, so now I'm going to go to the silver uh, leaderboard. And when we switch to the silver leaderboard, you can see down here, you go from 550,000 to less than 12,000. 11,688. That is just a huge drop. So you can see how difficult it is going from bronze to silver it is it is very 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 difficult uh, and there's probably several thousand aliases which means a player that has a second account or third or fourth or fifth account so there might only be seven thousand or eight thousand silver players 
And then out of those players, there only might be, you know, maybe a couple thousand that are actively playing. You know, the other players might have moved on. They figured they can't get out of silver, and then they decide to quit. It just gets too hard. It is, like I said, it is very difficult to move up the leaderboard. So then we'll go to the uh, gold leaderboard here. Uh, this is, oh, these are the, the silver players who've played a lot of games. Roll 1954. He, I think he has the most games played. 52,000 games. That's a lot of games. And he's a silver miner. And you've probably played some of these players. I've played a lot of them. You'll, as you move up the leaderboard, you'll, you'll start to play these players because there's, there's only a small pool of players. There's not a whole lot of uh, active silver players. There's, there might be like Maybe maybe three thousand, four thousand active, and then only a certain play at the time that you play. So you're going to be playing them, the same players over and over again. All right, now we'll go to the gold level. We and remember silver had eleven thousand six eighty nine. Now we go to the gold level here, and it really drops to three thousand seven hundred and twelve. So I mean, each level drops uh quite a lot and and again there's probably maybe a thousand or so you figure maybe at least like i said maybe 20 to 33 percent are aliases so you might only have 2500 gold and, and then then we go to the platinum level here let's get out of the gold we go to the platinum and you look down here at the bottom right 1093 platinum players and i think that's i think probably maybe 40 percent are aliases uh, there are a lot of aliases in the platinum level and i think uh there might only be maybe a couple hundred active platinum players actually playing i think a lot of players once they get to the platinum level or platinum marshal they have a goal. They want to be a platinum martial player, and then they decide to stop playing, because it, it can be very difficult. Uh, the games are very uh, intense, and a lot of people a lot of people don't like that. They're because they're so they're so hard to play. They really take a lot out of you, and even if you win, it can be exhausting. And if you lose, it can be you know semi devastating. You spend an hour hour uh, trying to beat your opponent. And you're really thinking hard and you just make one little blunder and it costs you the game or your opponent decides the lotto and gets lucky and you lose the game. And that can get frustrating. So I think a lot of players, once they reach the pl Platinum Marshal level, they decide to uh, stop playing. Now I did look up uh, uh, a player, uh, uh, Oe Sock. I, I searched for him here on the uh, leaderboard in the Platinum level. And so we go up here, and I want to. I don't know how to spell always sock, so I just I know it's S O K, and I search, and now he comes up. You see, it takes some time. So there he is. And what I want to talk about him is he became a platinum spy, and a really fast time. He didn't have any aliases. This was his only account. And he started to play a couple years ago, and his goal, his initial goal was he wanted to become a gold-level player. That was his goal, and he didn't even think he could do that. He was pretty humble. But he's a really smart guy, and uh, I think he's really good at poker. And he decided to give Stratego a try. And it only took him 205 games to get to the platinum level, and he had a 60% win ratio. And that is really impressive uh, to do that uh, because it is so hard going up the leaderboard. And what he did, how he did to, to get to the platinum level was he, he went to the Stratego Forum and he read everything he could on, on tactics and strategy. And he read all the, the good posts from uh, the top players. And then he watched a lot of uh, uh, the top players uh, that played on YouTube. I didn't have a channel then, and there weren't too many channels, but he watched every video on YouTube that he could. 
And then he went back onto the Stratego forum and asked a lot of good questions and got a lot of feedback. And then another thing he did it was he signed up uh, when he when he made it I think to gold. He signed up to play on Gravon, which is another uh, Stratego site with, but it has very few players. But the players that play there are really good. And he, I think he played a few games over there, so I think that uh, helped him out. When you get to a certain level, what you have to do is start playing players that are, are a lot better than you. And that's when he played over at Gravon. I think that really helped him out. And then he started to play a little more aggressive. And then he wound up uh, uh, becoming a platinum spy in only 205 games. So that was very impressive. Now he decided to quit. I read on, on a poker a forum where he wrote why he stopped playing was he said it was really uh, tough for him. First he was starting another job, so I guess he, he was he's like me. He didn't have enough time to really to play. And he, did, he just didn't like the grind going up because when you start playing better players, the games can be really long and you have to have a really strong end game and it, it took a lot out of him he said mentally uh, he was exhausted after the games so he decided uh, he was happy to uh, reach the platinum level and uh, he quit for the time being he might come back I think he probably will later on maybe when he has more time try to become maybe a platinum marshal and but anyway that's how you move up the leaderboard and that's how you can uh, Look at all these leader leaderboards here, the platinum. And you can see how difficult with the numbers, right? A thousand platinum. And we go there, you know, thirty seven hundred gold, eleven thousand six hundred uh silver, and then five hundred and fifty thousand um bronze. So don't be too upset if you're stuck in a bronze struggling. Uh there's uh, most people do, so it's just going to take a lot of time uh, before you can get out of there. All right, so let's now start our game number game number uh, eight of our series here, and we're there. We're only twelve points away, so we're matched up with the gold spy. So if we win this game, we should uh, we should make it to gold. So let's get started. I think I just, my board set up, I, I don't really put too much time into it. One thing I want to talk about though is I do like this bomb structure here. And you can move this bomb structure, these four bombs, you can move them across, you know, the entire board. It doesn't have to be here. But what's nice is it's very effective because if a player hits this bomb, they might think a triangle, right? Bomb here and a bomb here and a flag here. So if they hit this bomb, and then you take the miner, or if, if they come with a miner and then you take it, then they might come with a high piece to take this piece and then go down if, if they're not patient, and then they'll blow up on this bomb. So that's always good. Or they'll have a piece. Maybe they scout this piece, hit it with a scout or sergeant, and then they'll avoid hitting this piece and this piece because they'll think it's the bomb triangle and the flag is here. But in the late game, this piece and this piece look really enticing to hit. And and they might hit those instead, and you can wind up winning the game that way. Uh, the only negative, I think, problem with this setup, bomb setup, is you can't move these two pieces for most of the game. They just have to sit here. So maybe a lieutenant here is maybe not a good idea. Maybe you should have a sergeant or maybe another miner um, because you might want to use your lieutenant. But uh, if you can keep these pieces still for most of the game and let them hit this piece, uh, these two bombs can really, and even this bomb, can really uh, uh, fool your opponent and let you win and then you can use these two bombs you know have a, if you want to have a bomb then flag you could put the flag here or you could just shift it over and then have this bomb uh you can have you could just shift it over one have this bomb here and here and have the flag here and then have another bomb to move somewhere else 
So I, I definitely love this bomb structure. It's very effective. All right, so let's, I'm just moving some pieces around trying to be a little different. I don't remember if I played this guy before, but he's played a lot of games. So we're just moving things around. All right, and I didn't go up and over. I, I, I have to, I had to stop doing that because a lot of times when you would just go up, they would scout this piece automatically. And then I think a lot of, a lot of people, when I started my YouTube channel, a lot of people started playing with the flag up front. So then everybody was scouting the, the, uh, sides trying to find a flag. So 5'11", yeah, he, he is very experienced. So, oh, what did I do? I screwed up. Let's go back. We're here, and this is very unfortunate. Uh, he found my major with a major, and this is usually a bad sign because a lot of times Marshall Blitzers have scouts here major maybe a marshal here or a marshal here and then they might have a minor and a colonel and a minor and another scout and, and this this is not looking good right now uh it's never good when they start attacking on your flag sign uh but this is is not good now one thing i found out uh, while playing with a flag up front is i used to play a lot of games as a captain here but that turned out, I think, to be uh, a bad decision because when you go up and over with a captain, a lot of times players have a captain here and they they have no problems lottoing their captain, coming down or attacking with their captain down here. And and uh, so if, my, if I go up and over with my captain, they'll swap captains and then usually they have a scout behind the captain and they'll scout this and they'll win the game. And then I tried a colonel here. When you go up and over with a colonel to defend a flag, I think this brings too much uh, too much attention to this side, and that's the last thing you want. You don't want the player attacking over here. And if you have a colonel over here, they're going to want to try to trap it with a marshal in general, and they're going to want to scout everything around it. So I, I didn't like playing with the colonel at this spot. I thought the major for me was the best. I think it is the optimal play because you can go up, up and over. And a lot of times people have captains here. They don't have uh, colonels or, or generals or marshal here. So I, I think I like the major play the best. Uh, now, I think the Gravon uh, games, when people played with the flag up front, they almost all had the marshal next to the flag. Now, that might also be an optimal play for someone who doesn't mind playing with their marshal revealed because a lot of times this piece gets revealed rather quickly. Uh, I think in the long run, I think the major is the best piece. But if, if, if you're a really good player and you don't mind uh, re having your marshal revealed, then maybe the marshal might be the best piece to have next to the flag. Uh, mm. So, But this now here with this uh, major, major, I think I'm facing a marshal blitzer here. Or at least a strong attack on this side. So we go up and get scouted. Move up and shoot rats. Yep. He found our flag. So that kind of sucks. And uh, so we got scouted. I think maybe if I would have started the game going up and over, he probably would have, would have uh, hit this piece with the scout. But that's something you never know. But, uh, yeah, a lot of players have the scouts here on A4 and or A7 and J7. So this was rather unfortunate. So I guess the good news is we're not going to lose too many points uh, for the loss. And... This is why it's so difficult to move up the leaderboard, especially when you get higher up. You only play a certain... I did this before, starting at 100, and I wanted to get to 600, and I only got up to, five. I think, 565 
yellow playing with the flag up front and then I lost a whole bunch of games and then I went all the way back down to below 400 uh, I just had a couple uh, I think I had a couple bad losing streaks so it, it can be very difficult going up the leaderboard when you're if you're playing with a flag up front so and and you know this one only took him uh, eight moves for a loss so that's kind of disappointing so now we failed at uh we failed at game this was our second chance to get to gold so now we have to uh we're at 476 ELO so now we're probably going to have to win at least 3 in a row to get to the gold level and so that's how the grind is you get close to your goal and then you might lose 2 3 in a row and then you have to do do keep on winning and try to get back on a winning streak uh, it, it can be very slow moving up the leaderboard. So if you're stuck in the bronze, you know, uh, and enjoy it when you win four or five in a row, you know, treat yourself. And then, uh, uh, and like I said, keep good records of your opponents who you play. So uh, when you play them again, you know how they play, and that can help you. And then, uh, you know, don't... Uh, don't give up just because you're struggling because there's quite a lot of players that uh, have a hard time getting up the leaderboard. But then uh, I think once everything clicks in, when you play, you know, several hundred games, it might take you 500, it might take you a thousand games to try to figure out how to put everything together. And then uh, you can you can be like Oisak and make it to the uh, platinum level. All right, you're probably gonna guys are gonna want to watch game number uh, nine in the series. It is a very interesting game. Uh, it is a disaster of a game. The end game is just just awful, and it's a train wreck. And I think people like watching train wrecks, so you're gonna want to tune in for uh, game number nine. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Bye for now.